Tonight on Daily Planet, we're going fishing at the nuclear power plant. Man, it's like we're on The Simpsons or something. Hello and welcome to Daily Planet. I'm Zaya Tom. And I'm Dan Riskin. We have a wonderful hour all planned out for you. We sure do. We are going to dunk some cookies in the most extreme way possible. And we're going to take you to Solar City, which is a tropical island powered entirely by the sun. But to start, I'm going fishing at a nuclear power plant. Did you catch Blinky, the three-eyed fish from The Simpsons? I caught a shark. Today I'm learning that there's never a dull moment at the St. Lucie nuclear power plant. To provide electricity to a million Florida homes, seawater is pumped into this canal to cool the operations at a rate of one million gallons a minute. As water comes in, so do sea creatures. Thankfully, the folks at Florida Power & Light are working with marine scientists to turn this canal into a one-of-a-kind lab. From a scientific perspective, this is a research uh, gold mine. Michael Brizet is the caretaker of this football field-sized aquarium. On a really big year, we'll have up to 900 sea turtles that we pull in. And we actually catch quite a few sharks, and the main one is that we catch is nurse sharks. But we've also caught uh, bull sharks, we have frog fish that we've seen, uh, octopus. The coolest thing is maybe a mola mola, uh, ocean sunfish. For us, the scientists, it's the perfect trap. You get a real good snapshot of what um, what's out in the ocean, what's going on. So you get a good idea what the population is doing over time. Is it increasing, decreasing? What is the species composition? How are growth rates? Chris Costanzo is the plant's vice president. Well, some of the big misconceptions is that the animals that are come into our intake canal are thought to have been hurt, damaged, or even killed um, at our facility. And I'll tell you the opposite is true. If you look at our, our intake canals here, we've got fences that actually prevent any from that wildlife from being impacted uh, by our power plant. Preventing sea life from entering the intake pipes located a kilometer offshore is priority number one. To protect the wildlife, what we had done is put what we call a velocity cap on it. And that'll actually widen and spread out the forces that draw into that, uh, that pipe itself. Uh, so that turtles won't get in, actually entrained in, in the flow. So now why wouldn't you just put something like a big mesh over the pipe so that nothing gets in? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. If I simply put a mesh, um, there might create enough pressure that if some species of wildlife actually got onto the mesh, it would have a very difficult time coming off. If the mesh was too fine or it would get algae growth or, or get debris, um, I would then restrict the flow where it wouldn't be sufficient enough uh, water to be able to provide the cooling medium that I would need for the plant. Now they're spending millions to develop an even better solution. What we're looking at is putting a grate around the, um, the intake structure that will eliminate all the, the adult turtles so that we won't have to, turtles that are egg laden and ready to nest won't be entrained into the canal. And while their prototype looks promising, there's no rest for Mike and his team. We're there seven days a week taking sea turtles out of the intake canal. When it's the water visibility is good, like we had today, um, divers will go in snorkeling, and we will find turtles in the canal and hand capture them, which is actually really safe for the turtles, less stress than getting in the net. Larger turtles, like this 550 kilogram leatherback, require a crane. Once measured, weighed, and tagged, the animal is set free all within a matter of minutes. We get all sorts of turtles, healthy ones, sick ones, injured ones. And normally those sick turtles, we end up catching it, and then we are able to take it to a rehab facility where its chances of survival are hundredfold. Many are repeat visitors from as far as hundreds of kilometers away. We have one loggerhead that we've caught 49 times since 1989. We call him AJ because that's the first two letters of his tag. Oh, so, so we it's know kind that they're of like Club Med in there. Yeah, for them, they're they're fat and happy, and there's lots of fish for them to eat. So offshore, they have predators that they have to worry about. And that's proving true as I try and hook a Goliath grouper. Fishing for grouper. A fish that can weigh as much as a motorcycle. So it's 40 degrees plus here in Florida. We're at a nuclear power plant. We're fishing. But believe it or not, this is a pretty healthy ecosystem. So the fish are kind of fat and lazy. And it's taking a little bit of time to catch one. Got something? Yep. 
It ain't no grouper, but it's certainly Goliath. I think it's a nurse shark. Holy cow, nurse shark. We'll actually pass the uh, hand line off to the person in the boat. They'll continue to fight the shark until they get it up to the surface. And guess who that person is? I've got a nurse shark on the line. Um, what I'm going to try and do is uh, not wear it out too much, but a little bit, I guess. A little bit of a tug of war. Tug of war. <laughs> I can see it. Whoa, whoa. OK, so here it is. There's a shark. How? OK, it's right there. Wow, this is incredible. And the other person in the boat will help them lift it into the boat. Wow. Short trip to the floating dock, where someone will meet them with a wheelbarrow. And then we bring it up to our workup area, where we immediately put water on it so that its gills keep wow. oxygenated. What we first do is measure it from the tip of its snout to the end of its tail. Maybe like 184. And then we also look to see what sex it is. She doesn't have claspers, so this one is a female. Then we do a girth measurement. Which is a is. 68. And then after that, we tag it with a, a roto tag, which is a plastic tag. After that point, then we basically take it out to the beach and re-release it back into the wild, kind of like Free Willy. So we just let that nurse shark go. How many sharks have you caught in here? Over the last uh, probably five or six years, I would say over 200 nurse sharks. It's a privilege to be able to operate a nuclear power plant on this beautiful barrier island. Uh, a part of that privilege and respect um, is to be able to give back. The challenge for all power plants is to make sure they're good stewards of the environment while providing electricity. And that's a, that's a monumental task. And if we can achieve that, then you get to turn on your lights and your air conditioning, and the animals get to still use this environment that the power plant is, is using. That's just beautiful. And the incredible thing is, in another 20 years, those turtles will be back to nest on this beach. So, you reeled in a shark. I did, because I'm super strong.